Coming up in AOPA Live this week from AirVenture 2012, older is better for this jet jock. The flight line up close and personal, and ADSB, the little box that's out to change the way we fly. AOPA Live this week from Oshkosh starts right now. The week may be over, but things are not winding down yet at AirVenture. Thanks for watching AOPA Live this week. I'm Tom Haynes. Well, it's Saturday here at the show. A big crowd's expected. People come out to see the displays, of course, but the air show is always the big draw. Our crews, however, find out that it takes an entire city to keep the flight line moving. Attention on the orange net is flight line ops. The air show waiver today is active from 2.30 to 6.30, so about one hour and a half from now, we're gonna be closing for the air show. They're coming and going. Taking off and landing. Over 22,000 operations during the week. With all the movement, it takes hundreds of volunteers to staff the flight line at AirVenture. Flightline operations, we've got a little over 200 of our own volunteers, and also working with us are about 150 Civil Air Patrol. Uh, we're responsible for largely moving the airplanes around the taxiways. The tower controllers get them uh, onto the runway when they're landing, and as soon as they roll off, our volunteers take them. So we've got miles and miles of airplanes that we park, as well as moving people around the taxiways. From modern jets to the vintage radiance. The flight line's main job is to move the airplanes safely. Out here on a flight line operations at any given moment in time, we have approximately 30 volunteers working just traffic operations. We have probably have another 20 working parking and camping right now. But my job is to keep them all safe. This is what we call an alpha crossing. We have to get them across this east-west uh, major, major arrival uh, runway. So the crew here is to stage the aircraft to come across. Hey, we're on scooters, we're parking airplanes, and you're, you're signaling you know, $300,000 worth of equipment within about two feet of each other, and that can be kind of a scary thing. And are we rolling north or rolling south off of the runway? We're rolling north. Rolling north. This is a well-oiled machine here. We've worked at this for years to make it the way it is now. It's the excitement of Oshkosh that keeps this dedicated crew coming back. Taxi after taxi, and year after year. Uh, we are a big family. Everybody knows everybody else. Um, and people come back every year. I really feel like I've grown up here. People like working here. At AirVenture, Warren Morningstar, AOBA Live. And as AirVenture 2012 hits its big weekend, AOPA President Craig Fuller sits down with EAA boss Rod Hightower for a status check on the world's largest aviation event. What's a real treat for me every year is to come on to AOPA Live and get a chance to talk to the man who leads EAA, their president and CEO, and my friend Rod Hightower. Rod, welcome again to AOPA Live. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. It's a pleasure to be with you, and it's really an honor to have you guys at Oshkosh 2012. Give us a sense of how, how's it going? It's going great. You know, we had uh, our advanced purchase sales, which we monitor closely on the run-up. Our advanced purchase tickets and our first day sales were up just over 3% for the year. We had a little weather, you know, as you know, that comes through. We always have some treats for weather Oshkosh. So overall, we're just a little soft for the last, uh, for on Tuesday, but it's picked up again Wednesday and again today. Great response from the exhibitors. We have more exhibitors this year than we've ever had. So in the history of Oshkosh, we set a new record. And I can tell you that the folks that come here to market and mer their merchandise and market their products really make all the aviators happy because they offer a lot of great deals and a lot of great show specials. You know, we have a lot of fun, but I also think that a very important thing happens here, and that is you attract some of the government officials that have such an impact on our lives. You had a couple days for the first time uh, for uh, the admin acting administrator, Michael Huerta, his first time here, but really got him, gave him a chance to see what was going on, and of course you always open the doors and let all of us have that kind of interaction with him, but you spent a little time with him. Uh, what, what was your take? What did, he, what did he see and what did he, how did he react to it? I think acting administrator Huerta had a blast. Great. You know, it's hard not to have fun here, but he seemed, he's such a great guy. Very excellent, obviously an excellent leader, excellent management skills. But what I saw in him was an awakening of his 
passion for aviation a little bit. You know, he gets excited around airplanes. He tells a story about living very near Flavon Airport when he was young as a kid. So he says, I've always turned my eyes skyward. And he said, it's all here. So he really enjoyed himself and we enjoyed him. And you can see the entire interview on AOPALive.org. When we come back, all things ADSB plus he flies high in his jet, but things vintage have their advantages too. The OPA Live this week continues in just a moment. From your first skyward glance, the dream of flight compelled you. And from your first glimpse of a Cirrus, you realized that dream had a name. Cirrus Aircraft. Go where you've never been before. Welcome back to AOPA Live this week from AirVenture. French company Lisa Airplanes made its debut here at EA AirVenture this year with its Akoya luxury light sport airplane. This is a production prototype for an American audience. The Akoya uses hydrofoils, or what the company calls sea foils, to lift the aircraft above the surface on takeoff from water and to allow it to cruise with less drag than a conventional amphibian with floats or a hull. This seems to be the year of ADS-B at AirVenture. A number of companies have introduced ADS-B products in the last few weeks. AOPA flight training editor Ian Twombly takes a look at some of them. One thing that we're seeing a lot of new growth in at this year's Oshkosh is ADS-B boxes for the iPad. So now you're able to get subscription-free weather on the iPad through a number of different options. Um, this happens to be free flight systems. And uh, Free Flight's really an ADSB company. Uh, they uh, are already installed on some ground vehicles at airports and some other places. Right before the show, they introduced Explorer. Um, this is a uh, $585 box. The difference with Free Flight's Explorer box, it's installed in the airplane. So what that means is you don't have to worry about power and that sort of thing. Um, it'll send a subscription-free radar signal to their own app, which is 99 cents. Um, they also just announced they'll send it to WingX and uh, soon maybe for flight and I would expect some other partners. Now another real cool thing about them is they will be upgradable to ADS-B out and that means that come 2020 when you have to have ADS-B out um, it's a cheaper solution to upgrade and it means you'll finally see traffic on the iPad which um, I know is kind of a missing link that we're all waiting for. If you really want to ramp up your ADS-B experience you have to come check out Level because um, they're doing something that no one really, uh, no one else really is. Um, so here you can get ADSB in, or will be able to get ADSB in, including a bunch, a bunch of other features like um, AHARS, air data, and uh, even engine performance. So all kinds of different ranges. Uh, if you want to install them for experimentals or portables uh, on the iPad, it's really amazing stuff. All kinds of different uh, price ranges. So now we're at Navworks, and um, Navworks is a little bit different because they also offer out solutions. It'll be certified here in a couple of months, um, but today they, they also offer some in, um, and a small little box that at the show is uh, 795 bucks. Um, it'll send Bluetooth, which is a little bit different than others. Most send Wi-Fi. They'll send Bluetooth to the iPad and also a PC application, um, so which is essential flight. And um, so that's really nice if you're more of the, the PC kind of crowd. This is Sage Tech. They're kind of new to the game. Um, start, they have four receivers, starting with uh, kind of the low end, the core model, they call it. $699 here at the show. Sends um, weather and some traffic, other ADSB traffic, to the uh, iPad and a couple other EFB devices. Right now, they work with WingX and uh, maybe one or two other apps. Um, they're going to start shipping at the end of September. You get a discount here at the show. And they, they work their way up to a fourth unit, uh, which actually includes AHARS and is both dual band. Two units we didn't cover here are the Sporty Stratus and the Garmin GDL39, and that's because you'll find more about those already on AOPA Live, so make sure to check it out. Otherwise, if you're at the show, come around. There's about seven in total, all kinds of different features, in, out, AHARs, non-AHARs, lots of different options now for uh, weather, both on the iPad and other EFBs. I'm Ian Twombly, AOPA Live. Head-up displays were once only for the military. Now you'll find them in airliners and business jets. Two new products bring head-up displays to general aviation. Milan, Italy-based Pat Avionics is demonstrating a head-up display called G-Hulp here at AirVenture. With G-Hulp, you can monitor your airspeed, altitude, and course data projected on a transparent glass display. This HUD is only for the experimental market, and there is a HUD for your iPhone. Hilton Software, maker of Wing X Pro 7, has converted the iPhone into a combined attitude indicator and heads-up display that includes synthetic vision. 
With a Wi-Fi link to a level technology AHARS, the iPhone shows GPS-derived altitude and ground speed as well as pitch and bank. With the level unit connected to the airplane's pitot-static system, it shows indicated airspeed and barometric altitude during approach and landing. And yet another gadget to help you keep straight and level. The battery-powered Dynon D1 pocket panel is a self-contained attitude indicator with an internal GPS. It uses the same attitude heading and reference system, or AHARS technology, found in Dynon glass cockpits. I flew to Oshkosh with one strapped to the windshield of my Bonanza and found that it was very readable in sunlight and also very stable and completely simple to use. The D1 pocket panel sells for a little over $1,400. Jonathan Hardwick can get his hands on all the latest technology. You see, he flies business jets all around the world. But what is it that he really dreams of flying? Yeah, this is a 1952 Piper Pacer. It's an original just as it came out of the factory. We've done very little modification to it other than routine maintenance. When I was coming up to aviation, I began like a lot of guys in radio control models. and. And when you hang out down, I grew up in Florida, and down in Florida there's a lot of old, older gentlemen that would hang out in the model field. And they would always talk about, you know, what they flew, and, and it was, all, of course, grassroots type stuff. So the grassroots aircraft are what lights my fire. It's the old vintage, classy lines, go to a fly-in, land on a grass strip, that kind of thing. While he has an affinity for the way flying used to be, he does have at least one modern tool. I do have a handheld GPS, you know, um, there is some technology that it's stupid to not have, but no, I like it very original as it was back in 1952, and I, I think it's just the nostalgia of it, the way it used to be, a lot of people out here at Oshkosh are all chasing that feeling of the way it used to be, you know, we wouldn't be spending the money we spend to maintain airplanes that were, you know, 50, 60 years old or 75 years old in the case of the, the J3 Cub. I'm weird, I, I fly a very sophisticated jet, go all over the country, international, and, and uh, fly through tons of weather and stuff, and all I'm thinking about is when I get home and get to hop in my little airplane and go fly around. Flying a jet or flying a lot of technology is just a different, it's a different thing. You know, you can't compare that to, to the, what we're doing out here. I grew up around old airplanes. That's what kind of lit the fire for me in aviation is the old grassroots way of flying, stick and rudder flying. I would encourage anyone who's in a flight school learning to be an airline pilot to uh, go out to the local airport that's not quite as busy and find a tail dragger if there is one and go flying. We, you know, in the tail dragger family, we call it real flying. And, and it is, it's, it's just a different experience. Eric Brown, AOPA Live. When AOPA Live this week from AirVenture continues, 40 years of EAA shows. Flight following didn't call out an opposing plane. I saw it on the screen. He turned right and the other plane just pretty much flew right on by. It, it's your life, you only get one shot at this. Welcome back to AOPA Live this week from AirVenture. The Lightspeed Foundation does terrific work in recognizing the contributions of many nonprofit aviation organizations. We talked with Alan Schrader, who is the founder of the Lightspeed Foundation, about those contributions. This is our third season at the Foundation, and things are really going well. By all the metrics, both voting, social media, Facebook, all those things, there's increased engagement from, uh, from the pilot community and also from the 20 finalists that we're working with, and we're really excited about how well that's working out. As, as you're probably where the foundation focuses a good bit of, of its picks relative to the finalists on, uh, on organizations that are focused on, on growth specifically. So that includes some EAA chapters this year and also the AOPA Foundation and then a number of other organizations whose principal focus is on getting more people involved and engaged in various ways. That's specifically at the pilot area and yet I would say that what we need is more more, more pilots involved in getting people into that, not just those organizations, but, but uh, getting involved in ways, and the foundation way you can do that is frankly to vote, uh, to get involved by voting and passing along the information about your favorite organizations to others so that they're aware of the great work those organizations are doing in the areas of growth. 
Our Pilot's Choice Awards are the first ones that we'll give out, as you probably know. There's five of them, $10,000 each, to the top five organizations from a voting standpoint. And that voting continues until the end of October. After that, the Customer Choice Awards kick in, and those are awards that are really driven by our customers. If you've purchased a headset and you go register, you get to select one of the organizations to vote for. All of those organizations will get some gifts, but the top ones will be getting $5,000 grants. So that'll continue to be open through the winter and all the way up until next Sun and Fun when those will be announced. And finally, one last look at AirVenture through the eyes of a pilot and home builder who hasn't missed a show in 40 years. I'm Joe Lino, and that's Mary Lou, my wife. And we've been coming to Oshkosh since 1972. And we haven't missed a year since. And it's like a reunion for us. We've met so many people over the years. We've formed friendships with people. Uh, and we just keep coming back, and there's actually not enough time to see everybody and do everything. It is the people that bring you back. And then when it's time to leave, it's, it's sad. It really is sad, and you're just excited to see, you know, for the next year to come. But the Linus aren't just casual attendees. They're BD4 builders. We've been flying the airplane up here for 29 years. We started building it in 1970. It took us 12 years to complete. <laughs> 12 long years. It was a learning experience. That's what it's all about. Joe got the bug to build back in the 60s when he was working part-time as a flight instructor. One of my students showed me a picture of this airplane in a magazine and said, Joe, this is your airplane. So I sent away for information and 40 years later, here it is. When he came home and told me that he was going to build an airplane, I knew in the back of my mind, I knew he, was, he wanted to build an airplane, but I really didn't think it would happen. And then when I saw all the kits coming in, and I thought, oh, this isn't, this isn't a joke. <laughs> this is for real. The build wasn't exactly easy. Yes, we did have a flood. It was one of those gully washers in the middle of the night. They moved my wife and two daughters out in a boat, and I sat there and guarded the fortress, and, and we watched the water climb up the side of the airplane. Luckily, I hadn't put all the instruments in it yet, and the water stopped just below the instrument panel. In the middle of all this, we moved. And I have actually finished it and painted it in our garage at the new house, and ran the engine for the first time in our garage, and all of a sudden, all the neighbors were there. And I had the fire extinguisher just in case something happened. <laughs> but it all worked out. The Lee News credit Oshkosh for their successful build, though. All the other BD-4s or similar airplanes, I would be crawling under the airplane, taking pictures, writing down little notes about the way people did things, because I thought maybe I would want to incorporate that in in the airplane, which I did on a lot of things, and I found it very helpful to talk to other builders who'd been there, done that, and were flying. One important thing to note, remember that earlier conversation? We've been coming every year since 1972. Well, some memories are a little fuzzy. Got married in... 1966. 1966, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is always number one on the list every year. We have our reservations for next year already. We, it's just, it's just become part of us. At AirVenture, Paul Hera, AOPA Live. It's been a great week in Oshkosh. We hope you've had fun with us. We'll be back in Frederick on Thursday. Thanks for watching AOPA Live this week. I'm Tom Haynes. <laughs>